With the events following the Tournament of Power leading us to the return of Broly and the battle on Planet Namek against the Planet Eater Moro, our heroes continue their story after the greatest tournament ever held in the multiverse took place. However, what if I told you that the events of Dragon Ball Super Broly and Moro never directly occurred after the Tournament of Power? What if I told you that a new universe was created and a new God of Destruction was born? In this new Dragon Ball fan manga special, we set our sights on a new chapter in the Dragon Ball Super story as once more before we begin if you are new to this channel and are a fan of anime and Dragon Ball then don't forget to go on ahead and smash that subscribe button and turn on all notifications by clicking on the bell icon to never miss a single upload and smash that like button if you guys are stoked ready and excited for more awesome Dragon Ball fan mangas in which of course if you guys want to read up on all of your favorite Dragon Ball fan mangas you guys can find the official Dragon Ball fan mangas playlist located down down in the description box below for all the latest and best Dragon Ball fan mangas created by the community for the community so make sure you guys go on ahead and check that out down below as we kick off Beyond Dragon Ball Super New Horizon manga chapter number zero entitled Flowers of Evil and we notice how an individual is seemingly landing on this unknown planet now for whatever reason we find ourselves on this planet with Frost and as we see Frost wandering the alleyway having to cloak himself underneath this robe as he's trying to get to his destination he goes on to state here you are I finally found you what have they done to you look at the mess you're in now together we could do great things my brother you're the only hope. They are going to happen. Terrible things will totally change the fate of our universe. As of course we notice what seemingly does resemble that of Frost species inside of an incubation chamber, it seems as though Frost had in fact come across his brother. And as he tries to approach him, an unknown warrior steps in front of Frost and his brother as he cries out, Maggot, after all this time, you dare to come crawl in here? Stay back! As another warrior comes forward, they go on to tell Frost, you left us at a time when we needed you the most. As of course they continue, go back to where you came from. As Frost is irritated, he cries out, idiots. As the bigger warrior goes on to tell Frost, watch out Frost. Make one move, and you're dead. As Frost looks down, he goes on to state, You don't realize what's about to happen! The effects on all of us will be terrible. We cannot be still because someone very annoying is about to take the power and stand in our way. As Frost further goes on to cry out, The Omni Kings will merge our universe with the Seventh! basically implying that the only reason why he is here is because he wants to grab his brother and go elsewhere before, accordingly enough, the Omni Kings are going to merge Universe 6 and Universe 7 together. For whatever reason this may be, Frost is very concerned about this because he feels like the Omni Kings are starting to lose control of their powers. Meanwhile, back within the Omni King Palace, we observe the Omni Kings speaking to the Grand Priest. As both of the Omni Kings further go on to tell the Grand Priest, call them, let's start the ceremony. As the Grand Priest goes on to state, the Grand Priest shall convene Whis and Vados. As one of the Omni Kings go on to ask, oof, how long does it take them? I bet they're already arguing. Meanwhile, elsewhere, Champa and Beerus are beginning to argue. As Beerus goes on to scream at Champa, you're a nuisance. Each time that something happens, you're always involved. As Champa retaliates, it's certainly not my universe, the one that's always creating trouble. As we notice them bickering and fighting among the other gods, Beerus goes on to cry out, if you are yelling at this moment, it's only thanks to my universe. As Champa replies, I didn't ask you that. And I would like to know what you did again. Basically, Beerus having to imply that if it were not for him and his universe bringing everybody back, Champa would be dead, and Champa is just trying to get back at Beerus at this point, as Whis goes on to tell Beerus, Beerus calm down, as Vados does the same for Champa, as she goes on to tell him, don't forget where we are, as both of the Omni Kings show up, they go on to tell them both, be quiet. And as they both do, both Champa and Beerus are horrified that the Omni Kings are here. As they both go on to apologize, they go on to cry out, our apologies Omni King, we are right now, we will stop, we didn't mean to disrespect you. As they both sit there, they go on to tell them both, now everyone is here. 
we can start. As the Grand Priest initiates, he goes on to tell everyone, in the Tournament of Power, the 6th and 7th universe gave proof of their nature of their twin universes. Impressed by your sense of trust, the Grand Zenos decided to honor you with a gift. Lord Champa's universe and Lord Beerus's universe. From now on, they will be one thing. As the Grand Priest spawns what seemingly resembles that of coins, he goes on to tell them both, please Grand Zeno, may you proceed. As both of the Zenos raise their hands up in the air, they both cry out, FUSION HA! As they fuse both of the universes together, that in which was the coins that we saw above the Grand Priest's arms, the God of Destruction of Universe 2, Halis, goes on to state so. The two twin universes are merged for real? As the Grand Priest reveals a scroll, he goes on to tell everyone, by following the universal rules written by the Grand Zeno in person, at the dawn of time, each new universe that was forged by the will of the King of All or the result of the union of universes already in existence, it must necessarily be in the hand of a new and unique god, implying that there must be a new god of destruction for this new universe. As Catella from Universe 4 goes on to laugh at Beerus, he goes on to cry out, Hear that, Beerus? It's time for the kitten to go back to its lair. As Beerus looks at Catella, he goes on to tell him how annoying, and I'm not even old enough to retire. As Belmont goes on to comment, I wonder who's able to become a god. If it happened to me, I would be spoiled for choice. Basically implying that Beerus and Champa don't really have a successor in becoming the next god of destruction of this newly formed universe. As even then the Grand Priest continues, in addition, I have one last thing to say. As Beerus and Champa both look at the coin, Beerus goes on to state, so now we are two sides of the same coin. The Grand Priest continues, as announced earlier, the new universe needs a new god of destruction, and the previous gods have the responsibility to find a new one, and obviously they will also have the duty to train him. To encourage you during the search, the Grand Zeno decided to give you a maximum of 48 hours to find him, but if you won't make it, your laziness will be punished with the erasure of the universe. As once again both Beerus and Champa are horrified, they go on to cry out, WHAT? AGAIN? As we spouse, he goes on to tell the Grand Priest, we thank the Grand Zeno for this privilege. As the Grand Priest tells everyone, okay, now you may all leave. As he sends everyone back to their respective worlds, now it's up to Champa and Beerus to not only find a new candidate to be a god, but also bestow the responsibility upon them in also training them as well. As meanwhile back on Beerus' planet, he goes on to cry out, it's not possible, only 48 hours? We don't have the time to find someone that can be compared to a god, and I'm not so old to retire. I have no intention to give my place. As Whis tries to calm him down, he goes on to tell him Lord Beerus, you've got no choice. The Great Priest and the Grand Zeno were very clear about it. In addition, try to notice the positive side about it. Without the duties of a god, you can eat and sleep on earth for as long as you please. As Vanos also goes on to comment, unfortunately, nobody can go against Zeno's will. So, I suggest stop complaining and start focusing on the research. As Champa laughs, he goes on to tell Beerus and everyone else, my universe is full of brave warriors. It won't be a problem of me finding someone worthy of taking my place. And I'm not scared of just 48 hours. As Vados looks within her staff, she goes on to tell Champa, Lord Champa, to be honest, between the warriors of the sixth universe, there aren't many options. As Beerus then goes on to laugh at Champa, he goes on to tell him, what's wrong Champa? Where's your confidence and arrogance? I'm not surprised at all, especially after your performance during the Tournament of Power. As this irritates Champa, he goes on to tell Beerus, damn you, I prefer losing with honor than losing against one dear brother. I can find warriors that are able to obscure your pure pupils. As once again they begin to fight, Beerus cries out, how? dare you! Okay, if this is a challenge, 
I accept it. I'll shut your mouth once and for all. As Champa cries out, well then, the game is on, brother. Remember it. We have 48 hours. As the angels are laughing, Whis goes on to comment, ho oh, oh, you guys are really hopeless. Okay, let's start. As meanwhile back on Earth, we notice how Goku, who is in fact wearing the original Dragon Ball Z ending slash Dragon Ball GT Gi, train with someone on Earth as he goes on to cry out, so you're tough, huh? You're adapting very well to my fighting style. Okay, let's see how you deal with this. Kame ha me as Goku fires off the Kamehameha, indeed Goku is training with someone in which at this point we can all assume who that person may be but nonetheless Goku does in fact at this point have a focus as he fires off the Kamehameha he goes on to reply too easy well okay then as he ups it up even more as firing the Kamehameha Goku transforms into a Super Saiyan and as he does so he goes on to comment once again very good all right Let's see what happens when I go beyond my limits, as he transforms then into Super Saiyan 2. So each time right now Goku is pushing and upping up his level, the person that he's training against seems to be holding his own. As Goku jumps from Super Saiyan 2 to Super Saiyan 3, Goku further goes on to comment, Incredible! Your resistance is impressive! And meanwhile with Beerus and Whis showing up, Beerus goes on to comment, Here he is! He's always training as usual. As Whis goes on to comment, we should really go say hello. With Beerus having to smile, he goes on to tell him, Sure, Whis, but first, I want to play a little prank on him. With Goku being solely focused on training, Beerus actually cuts in between the Kamehameha, snaps his fingers as the Kamehameha completely disappears. And as Goku looks over, Beerus goes on to tell Goku, surprised. And that was what I found really cool about this specific panel, is seeing Beerus just step in right in between the Kamehameha and snap his fingers, completely wiping away the Kamehameha. And as Beerus touches down, he goes on to tell Goku, you look good, Goku. But this is not a pleasure visit. We need a new god of destruction, so you come with us now. As Goku asks, uh, what? Me? With Beerus having to comment, I know that you've already defused this task, but this time we are forced, basically implying that before when Goku was asked, he said no, but now he has no other choice. As Whis goes on to comment, we're making a classification of the best warriors of the seventh universe, and you are at the top of that list, obviously. And with Goku having to hear this, he goes on to ask a new god of destruction, but but why? As Whis proceeds to comment Goku, the situation is more serious than you think. The Grand Zenos decided to merge our universe with the sixth, and now we only have 48 hours to find a new god, otherwise Zeno will erase everything. As Beerus goes on to comment, exactly, the Grand Zeno decided to send me to retirement. As Goku casually laughs, he goes on to tell them both, I'm really sorry Lord Beerus, but I don't think I would be the right person to become a god of destruction. And I mean, not to mention that I have many things to learn, and here on Earth is where I have my roots. If something bad happens, I mean, who will defend it, right? And now, I also have the responsibility of a pupil to train. So I hope that it wouldn't be a problem if I refused your proposition, as Beerus cries out, IDIOT! How could you refuse so lightly? You should feel honored! <sighs> Okay, let's go Whis, it's useless, insist with this big head, let's just leave. As of course Beerus and Whis leave, Goku's left there just baffled as to what he had just overheard. As Goku goes on to comment, good luck Whis and Lord Beerus, I'm sure that you'll truly find someone better than me to become a god. As an individual in the background cries out, hey master! As Goku looks behind him, the individual goes on to tell him, Master, I'm getting bored waiting here. As of course Goku transforms into a Super Saiyan, he rushes on in. Which, just to be clear, the individual slash student that Goku had taken up at this point is in fact Oob. And as we go back into space, the narration goes on to state planet Sadala the New Saiyan Settlement. As Whis begins to talk to Beerus, Whis goes on to tell him, The Sadala planet is the new base of the Saiyan race. As Beerus goes on to comment, so, in your opinion, he could be here, Whis? 
as Whis tells him, well, as far as we know, he hasn't been around for a while and the information that we have is very limited. As Beer smiles, he goes on to state after all this time, I'm really curious to see how that blowhard has changed. As inside the palace, we see how a Saiyan steps out as he greets Whis and Beerus by stating my lords, I am pleased to take you personally to the king. As Whis goes on to state, did you hear that? We have a new king, Beerus. As Beerus goes on to cry out, <laughs> what kind of egotist can still call himself king? <sighs> I can't wait to meet him already. While inside the palace, we notice how Vegeta had taken the role of being the new king of the Saiyans of Planet Sadala, in which I will add, Vegeta looks phenomenal having to sit there on the throne. And as Whis and Beerus step inside, Whis goes on to state, So Vegeta, we are here to propose you to become the next god of destruction of the new universe. Who could be the king if not him, that's to be expected. As Kaba goes on to cry out, Wow, King Vegeta, think about it, it would be great. As Vegeta goes on to reply, Tuh, I never cared about becoming a god, so I don't much like the idea. Kaba, Prepare our men and let's go show our guests the new Saiyan power. As Kaba goes on to tell Vegeta, got it. With everyone having to step outside, we notice a few new Saiyans including Kale and Caulifla. As Caulifla goes on to comment, that's a bummer. Why must we stay here? As Kaba goes on to tell everyone, everyone get ready. As Vegeta cries out, get into it, everyone transforms into a Super Saiyan. Essentially, every single Saiyan there is now capable of transforming into a Super Saiyan. As even then, there's an unsettling feeling as Vegeta goes on to state something out there, it's already happening. As we notice Frieza's ship in space, we also get to see how Beerus and Champa meet up in space as they begin to conversate. As Beerus goes on to tell Champa, as I imagined, you've come empty handed, tch, I pity you. As Champa replies, it's funny that you say that, with Vados having to cry out, no god means the erasure of the new universe. As Whis also comments, not to mention that time is running out, with Champa having to reply, I got it, you and I can use the Potara. We will be a completely different being, as Beerus goes on to tell him, forget it, I won't ever fuse my body with yours. But other than that, we don't have Pataras. As Vados goes on to comment, Whis, have you got another idea? As Whis goes on to comment, ho ho ho, thinking about our list, we haven't considered a certain lord. As Beerus and Champa quickly turn around, they go on to comment, what? Wait. You're not talking about! With the idea and concept of Frieza having to pop into their heads, we go back to Planet Sadala as of course this was a flashback, with Whis having to stay, what a surprise! I've never seen so many Super Saiyans all together in front of my eyes. As Vegeta goes on to ask, so, Lord Beerus, what do you think? As Beerus is unimpressed, he goes on to tell them all, yes, very interesting, but among all of these Super Saiyans, just one seems to be very different as he looks at Kaba, with Vegeta having to ask, So Vegeta, will you too refuse our proposal? As Vegeta goes on to comment, I've worked so hard to rebuild what was taken from me, I cannot accept. As Beerus looks at Vegeta, he goes on to tell him, Well, dear King Vegeta, I just have to wish you all the best for your people. As Whis looks behind him, he also goes on to state, Before I'd go, I'd like to tell you all that also Goku has a pupil very promising. As Kaba goes on to comment, I hope to meet him one day. And as they leave, Kaba goes on to ask Vegeta, So, now what will happen? As Vegeta tells him, Kaba, we don't have any reason to be so calm. I know which could be the next one on their list. As of course, within Frieza's ship, we notice how Beerus is there with Champa and Vados, as Beerus goes on to state, just imagine what you could do with the title of God of Destruction, the Free Will. As Vados goes on to tell Champa, he's not exaggerating, he's been talking to him for an hour. As Frieza sits there on his throne, looking deep into outer space, Beerus continues to tell him being a God of Destruction will make you respected throughout your universe universe, and in others too. Moreover, how could you expect to be the emperor of this universe if Zeno will erase it? As Whis goes on to comment, don't forget that being a god will give you the power of Hakai, and your predecessors will help you master it. As Vados also quickly chimes in, she goes on to comment, who knows how many limits you can overcome with this divine training. As Champa smiles, he goes on to ask, so... What are you going to do? 
As sinisterly enough Frieza smiles outside of Frieza's ship, we notice how the new god of destruction of the newly formed universe just so happens to be Frieza at this current point in time. As Frieza emerges in his golden state, we finally get to witness the new emperor, the new god of destruction, Golden Frieza. As we quickly get a little bit of a gag within the universe itself how Champa and Vados visited Hit, they basically also asked Hit if he wanted to be a god of destruction and he simply said no. And as Champa was disappointed, Vados went on to state, whoops, well, another no, hey there Lord Champa. But meanwhile back on Earth we notice how Goku is intensely training with Oob. They're going back and forth, fighting each other with such intensity, Oob goes on to ask Goku, wow. What power, master? As Goku goes on to state, well, maybe I overdid it, but Oob, you've been doing really good. We're done for today. As Oob goes on to ask already, but I have a lot of energy. But my uniform is also destroyed, so I can't keep it up. As Goku goes on to tell him, well, I say we go back home, and after a shower, you're in for a surprise. As Goku later gifts Oob with his original orange gi, the manga chapter comes to a close. Now I really enjoyed this manga special because it reminded me so much of Dragon Ball Kakamine which was discontinued ultimately early on last year, but this also gives us a different perspective of what happens after the Tournament of Power, the birth of a new universe, the conflict within the actual universes themselves, Goku took a pupil that being Oob, Vegeta is the new king of the new Saiyan race on new planet Sadala, and everything seems to be flowing so well, I would love to see this in the form of an actual anime or manga because it gives us a different perspective as to what Beerus would do and Champa if they were relieved of being a god of destruction, but also it begs the question as to what about Frieza? How intense and how dangerous is Frieza going to be going forward as of course he is the new god of destruction of the newly fused universes. So again, I want to get your thoughts in the comment section below guys. What did you guys think about this manga special? Did you guys like it? Did you guys hate it? And what are your overall expectations going forward with manga chapter number one? Thank you all so much for watching guys. Once more, if you guys are new to this channel, don't forget to go on ahead and smash that subscribe button, slap a like down below, and give this video a huge thumbs up if you guys enjoyed. Follow me on Twitter at Unreal and Gaming, and of course at Instagram at Unreal DBZ. Thank you all so much once again. Tune back in for more, and I'll be seeing each and every single one of you guys down in the comment section below. Have a great day, everybody. Peace. This is the Galactic Emperor of the Universe, and of course I'm here to tell you to subscribe to Unrelent Gaming. Also follow Unrelent Gaming on these social media platforms to stay connected at all times. And if you don't, then very soon you will all be dead! <laughs> oh, did someone say Unrelent Gaming? Oh my god. The fuck, Zabon? Put on some clothes! Well, why don't you put on any clothes? What? I don't need clothes! Jesus Christ, that's huge! <laughs> what, Broly? Freezer. Uh oh. Prepare to die! <laughs> <laughs>